How to compute convolution using MATLAB, NumPy or SciPy? What do three modes of convolution, full, valid and same, mean? Hi everyone, this is Jan Wilczek from TheWolfSound.com and in this video we are going to discuss how to compute convolution using numerical software. Normally, we don't want to implement convolution every time ourselves. We want to turn to some pre-implemented <laughs> libraries or software. In order to do that, we need to know what arguments do they take and what these arguments mean. That is why, before we discuss these functions of MATLAB, NumPy and SciPy, we need to understand what do three modes of convolution mean. Are you ready? As we discussed in the previous videos, convolution is the operation of taking two signals, inverting one of them, and then shifting, multiplying the values of the two signals and summing together. The three modes of convolution relate exactly to the shifts that we are allowed to take to compute a specific mode of convolution. The first mode to discuss is the full mode. In this mode, we take every shift between the two signals for which there exists at least one overlapping sample. In other words, it is the mathematical definition of convolution. And if we have two input signals of length m and n, the length of the output is m plus n minus one. The full convolution mode is the default mode for all MATLAB, NumPy and SciPy. The valid mode of convolution is the opposite of the full mode of convolution. In valid mode, we only get the samples at the output for which the shift between the two signals are shifts for which two signals completely overlap. In other words, all shifts for which the shorter signal is completely, let's say, inside the longer signal. The length of the output in the valid mode of convolution is the length of the longer signal minus the length of the shorter signal plus one. As you may observe, the length of the output shrinks with each application of the convolution in the valid mode, which means that after sufficiently many applications of convolution in the valid mode, we will be left with just one sample. The same mode of convolution is a middle ground between the full mode and the valid mode. In this mode, the length of the output of the convolution is the same as the length of the longer signal in case of NumPy or SciPy, or the length of the first supplied signal as in the case of MATLAB. This mode comes in handy when we want to keep the length of the applied convolution constant. Now you may wonder which part of the full convolution is returned. Usually it is the middle part with respect to the full convolution mode. However, I believe it is always important to check by yourself that you know and understand which part of the full convolution output is cropped in case of the same convolution mode. Okay, now that we understand the three modes of convolution, we may proceed to the functions in the numerical libraries used to compute convolution. Uh -huh. In NumPy, we have the function NumPyConvolve. It takes two input signals, and the third argument is a string representing the mode, which means full, valid, or same. The two input signals need to be 1D arrays. In package scipy signal, there's a function convolve, which again takes two input signals, the mode and the method. The two input signals can be arbitrary dimensional arrays and the convolution is computed over all dimensions. The mode is again full, valid or same, but the method is something new. If we supply the string direct for the method, then the mathematical definition of convolution is used to compute the output. This is fine for short signals, but for longer signals, we may want to pass in FFT, which means that the fast convolution algorithm using the fast Fourier transform 
will be used. Now, passing in the FFT is equivalent to using the function FFT convolve from the SciPy signal package. We want to use FFT mode when we compute the convolution of very long signals of, let's say, similar length. But if we have two long signals of significantly differing length, we may want to turn to OA convolve, which is a function that uses the overlap add scheme of fast convolution. OA convolve and FFT convolve have the same signatures. It means that they take two input signals and the mode, and the two input signals can be arbitrarily dimensional arrays. Finally, MATLAB's conf takes two input vectors, which are column or row vectors, and a mode argument, which defaults to full if it is not supplied. If we want to perform two-dimensional convolution, we have conf2 function, and if we want to perform n-dimensional convolution, which means that we have arbitrarily sized matrices, we may turn to conf n. In summary, in this video we discussed three modes of convolution, full, valid and same, and we discussed the convolution functions of NumPy, SciPy and MATLAB. I have put links to the documentation of all of these functions in the description below, along with the link to the full article over at dwolfsound.com. I highly encourage you to check them out. Other than that, if you liked the video, I encourage you to subscribe to this <laughs> channel, hit the thumbs up, turn on notifications, and as always, if you have any questions, please let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching and take care.